This video will discuss how we can report data that has been log transformed. Very often we have data that is skewed, that does not fit a normal distribution. So in order to perform parametric statistics on that data, we need to transform it, and typically we do a log transformation. But then once we've log transformed that data, we then need to be able to report that data uh, in a result section. Uh, especially the means, uh, confidence intervals, and so forth need to be reported and we'll need to adjust the data so that it can be reported adequately. So then how do we report log transform data? Well it's important to remember when a log, when a data, a variable has been log transformed, like let's like say we've collected scores on push-ups, how many push-ups someone can perform, it, it's difficult to report that transformed data um, its mean and confidence interval and transform units because it just doesn't make any sense. If I if the mean of the raw data of push-ups was 15 and I have a log transform mean of 1, that doesn't really make any sense to report a mean number of push-ups of 1. So very often reporting the mean of log transform data, it's lost its context. And so it doesn't really make much sense relative to the original research question. So in order to uh, return the data back to its proper context, even after it's been log transformed, in other words, it's been transformed to a more normal distribution, so now it will have a new mean and a new variance, um, we need to do a technique called back transformation so that we can transform the results from the log transformation back to its normal raw units or normal context, and then we can report means and confidence intervals. And so once, once we've done that, then that data can be reported in its original units of measure. So how we do back transformation is we basically are going to perform the opposite of the mathematical function that we may have used in the original data transformation. And so if we're using log 10 data transformation to make skewed data more normal, we then need to back transform that by raising 10 to the power of the log transformed variable mean. So again, if we uh, had push-up data, number of push-ups someone performed, and we transformed that, log transformed that, we would then have a mean of the log transform variable. We would then take that mean and raise 10 by that number, raise 10 to the power of that number. So for example, we have log transform data for push-ups that possibly has a mean of 1.04, and the 95% confidence interval is 0.34 for log transform push-ups. So the back transformed mean would be 10 to the power of 1.0436, which would be 11.1 push-ups. The upper confidence limit would be 10 to the power of the log transform mean plus the confidence interval, which would give us then 24.4 push-ups. And then the lower confidence limit would be the log transform mean minus the confidence interval and then that power and then 10 would be uh, multiplied by that power and so that would give us five push-ups. And so one thing you might notice is when this happens the confidence limits are no longer symmetrical in other words we don't have 0.344 above and below. So the upper limit is 13.3 push-ups above the mean and the lower limit is only 6.1 push-ups below the mean. Again, that reflects the fact that we had originally skewed data, it was transformed, and now we have slightly uneven confidence intervals. Now, when we back transform the confidence interval, we can't just add or subtract that log transform confidence interval from the back transformed mean. In other words, we can't take 10 to the point three. 3, 4, 4 power, power, and then add or subtract that to that 11.1, .1, that back transform mean. So what I'd like to do next is go ahead and show you how we can do this and how we do this from SPSS data. We can do this back transformation. So what I have here is um, some numeric data. Here's push-up scores on 12 subjects. And then the first column here is the original uh, data that was skewed. And then in the next uh, column we have the log transformed data. Okay, So what we do then is we want to go to the analyze menu and we want to get the descriptive statistics for this particular variable. So it can push up log is the variable we're interested in. We want to make sure we're getting the descriptives including the confidence intervals for the means. 
Okay, so the log the mean of the log transformed variable is 1.0436. Okay, the confidence interval, 95% confidence interval, is 0.344. So 1.04 plus 0.344 is 1.38, and then minus 0.344 is 0.7. Okay, so those are three pieces of information we're going to need in order to back transform the data as we talked about. And probably one of the easiest ways to do this is to actually do this in Excel. And I've, I've already uh, got this set up here. So what we want to make sure we do uh, is we want to make sure we first of all list um, what our log transform mean is and then what our log transformed confidence interval is. And then we can use a very simple formula to then back transform the log mean to the normal mean or the, the raw mean. And we can go to uh, math trig functions. And then we ask for power or find power. Okay, and so here the number we're going to use is 10. That's the number we're going to, to, to transform or to use the power of. And then the power we're going to use is that log transform mean. Okay, so we enter A2 in there, or we could enter the actual number in there. And then that takes 10 to the 1.0436 power. And that gives us 11.05. Okay, now we can do the same thing with the upper and lower confidence interval. So now we're back to this 11.1 .1, um, push-ups. So here we are in the log transform mean, and now we're back to the to the back transform mean back in the original units of push-ups. Now to do the confidence interval, we use we can use the same formula. Okay, again we're gonna use 10 as the number, and then the power is going to be again the mean, log transform mean plus the log transformed confidence interval. And that's going to give us an upper 95% confidence interval of basically 24. Okay, and then to do the lower confidence interval, we're again going to use the power function, power of 10, and now we use the log transform mean minus the log transformed confidence interval. So A2 minus B2. And that gives us a lower confidence interval of basically five push-ups. So we started out with this um, skewed data. We log transformed it, did whatever analysis we were going to do on it, whether it was an ANOVA or t-test or other kind of parametric test. And then in order to report that log transformed mean and variance back in its original units, we need to do this back transformation. And so we take our log transform mean and our log transform confidence interval. Okay, we take the number 10 and we take 10 to the power of these two values and that will give us now a back transform mean and then we can use uh, a very simple formula to then determine the upper confidence interval and the lower confidence interval of that back transform mean. Okay, now this will be different, this back transform mean will be different than the mean would have been for the original uh, untransformed or skewed data. So we have to make sure we identify this properly and, and don't get those two mixed up. So to summarize what we've been able to do is to learn how to report transformed log transformed data back in its original format. So again we'll need to know what the log transformed mean is, what the log transformed confidence interval is, and we can very easily uh, back transform it into its original units.